So in this case, what we have, ladies and gentlemen, is a couple lengths. And we have one that does not look very fun, right? Square root of 2. But Shane, that should not scare you away from this problem. But let's go and write this in. This. So we know that that's 3 times square root of 2. And AP is going to be 3. All right, so I'm looking at this. Oh, and it does say that NPMQ is a rhombus. So we know it's a rhombus. So guess what? There has to be something special about this that's going to help us solve the problem. So Tommy, when you think of the rhombus, you know it has all the characteristics of a parallelogram, but there's a couple extra characteristics that make a rhombus special. Do you know of any of them? Lena, second chance? No? Lauren? That's 3 times the square root of 2. David, do you remember what makes a rhombus special? Um, There's a couple characteristics that separate it from all parallel from parallelograms. Layla. They all have the same yes, a, para, a rhombus, unlike all parallelograms, to consider it a rhombus, has to have four congruent sides. And a square is also. A square and a rhombus are the two parallelograms that have four congruent sides. And a square and a rhombus are also very similar to each other with one other characteristic. Guillermo, do you know? Wait, say that again. The rhombus and a square are also very closely related to each other because they also share another characteristic. They share four congruent sides. And there's one more. I'll give you a hint. It deals with the diagonals. Yes, David? The two pairs of opposite angles are congruent? Yeah, but that's going to be true for all parallelograms, though. Yes? Uh, the, the, especially for Robin? Yeah. Um, the diagonals bisect the angles. They do bisect the angles. And that is true for a rhombus. It's also true for a square. And you're right on to the right point, but that's actually not what I'm looking for. But that's exactly correct. There's something else. Something very important. What about what happens when those diagonals cross each other? What do they create? Huh? They give you a right angle, guys. They're perpendicular. The bisectors of a rhombus, or I'm sorry, the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular to one another. Okay. So therefore, guys, if I pull that out. I have a triangle. And more importantly, I have a right triangle. And I know that I have a right triangle, Seth. I can apply the what theorem? The a squared plus b squared equals c squared theorem, which we call the Pythagorean theorem. Now we need to determine what are we looking for. We're looking for PM, right? And actually, for this problem, we don't even need to do that. Because we also know that, I don't know, I went over this whole tangent. And this problem is much easier than it has to be. However, you guys do need to know that. Because there is a problem I know that says to find AQ. Right? So to find AQ, you'd have to use the Pythagorean theorem. However, this problem is even easier than that. What do we know? We know the diagonals are congruent, right? And they bisect each other. So if AP is 3, what do you think PM is? 3. 3. That's 3. So it's 6. This problem is actually a lot easier than you don't have to do the Pythagorean theorem for this one, which is not bad. All right, but for the